do you own too much stuff? Come on, be honest. Or maybe it's more like your stuff owns you. Take a look. Have you noticed it yet? Take a look around. Your home, your car, your purse. Clutter. It's everywhere. New York Times bestselling author Ruth Sukup says clutter can be physical, mental, or even spiritual. After going through a two-year bout with depression, she knows how difficult dealing with internal and external clutter can get. In her new book, Unstuffed, she shares how to declutter your home, your mind, and your soul. Please welcome to the 700 Club, the author of Unstuffed, Ruth Sukup. Ruth, it's great to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. Boy, there's a message in here for all of us, I think. You talk about the significance of an uncluttered life. Why is that important? You know, I think we've filled our lives with so much stuff, all of us. Without and meaning to sometimes. Without meaning yeah. to. It just kind of happens. We live in this society that is constantly bombarding us with this message that we need more and more and more and more. And so there's the physical stuff. And there's also the stuff that fills up our schedules. You know, we're busy. Yeah. Like busy is the new buzzword for every single person that you talk to. Oh, how's it going? I'm so busy. Mm -hmm. And so there's all of this stuff in our lives that's kind of weighing us down and causing yeah. more and more stress without even really realizing that's what's causing it. You know, um, you weren't always this way. I mean, there was a time in your life where you felt cluttered in all of the areas that you yes. mentioned in your book. What was the catalyst that kind of said, Ruth, we need to change this? <laughs> I think I've had lots of catalysts <laughs> along the way, actually. It's all a process. <laughs> to be perfectly honest, I am a mess a lot of the time. <laughs> but um, for, for me, one of the big things that happened in our family was when my kids, a few years ago, when my kids were a little bit smaller, mm -hmm. I ended up taking all of their toys away. Yeah. And that was, it was this interesting day where I had been warning him for a while, if you don't clean up your stuff, I'm going to take it away, I'm going to take it away. And he kept warning him and kept warning him. And one day I was like, let's just do it. Let's just take it away. Yeah. And so we did and we boxed it all up. And we had oh, this huge pile in the hallway for like a week because we didn't even know what to do with it all. <laughs> and I kept thinking they were going to want it back. They were going to see all that stuff there and go, mommy, we'll, we'll, whatever it takes, we'll do it. We'll get it. We want to get it back. And and they didn't want it back. It actually and opened doors to other interesting things, didn't it? They, yeah, they became so much more content. And it was such a oh, eye-opening experience for me because I realized I was doing to them what I had yeah. been doing to myself and to, the, yeah. to our whole family. It was just filling our lives with stuff that we didn't need and didn't want. And lots of times, children's toys especially, take away the, the imagination and the creativity of yes. just doing whatever your your heart and your mind yeah. is leading you to. Absolutely. You share some really helpful steps to decluttering your life. Yes. Where do we begin? You know, I like to encourage people to start with a vision mm -hmm. before you try to get rid of because I think sometimes when people have a lot of clutter and there's a lot of stuff in your life, you get this overwhelming feeling like I don't even yeah. know where to start. And so the first step I think is really to create a vision of what you want your home to feel like when you walk in the door. And that doesn't mean what you want, how you want your home to look like the Pottery Barn catalog, mm -hmm. but it means how do I actually use my home? Who do I share my home with? And how do I want people to feel when they're there? Yeah, in real life, the Pottery Barn catalog isn't always very <laughs> realistic, is it? <laughs> no, it's not. But I think a lot of times we buy stuff and we fill our lives with stuff based on the promise of what we think yeah. we want on this image of this unrealistic image that we can't actually attain instead of actually thinking about how we really truly use our home and how we want it to feel. Yeah, you really give some good insight into there. I loved what you shared about a Thanksgiving that your family had had where yes. relatives came and people were sleeping on the floor and I mean, it was less than a perfect scenario, it but was. what a great memory. And it was the best, <laughs> like one of the best memories. In fact, in my family, we just did something similar this last Christmas. We went to a cabin up in, in Washington state, up in the mountains, and we lost power for two and a half days. Oh my word. 25 of us or 22 of us in a cabin <laughs> with no power for two days. <laughs> it was the best Christmas any of us have ever had. We went sledding. Like there was, it was all memories, no stuff and, wow. and, and totally imperfect and so perfect at the same time. Do you think we deal because of advertising and, and I hate to stick this to Pottery Barn, but we're using them. So let's just <laughs> continue <laughs> that we feel guilt when our households aren't 
picture perfect and when everything isn't just ready for guests to arrive? There is so much guilt that gets attached to stuff in so many ways. So I like to call it this like endless cycle of guilt that gets us trapped <laughs> in clutter because we feel guilty about not having the home that we think we, we need to have. So we buy more stuff to create this. And then we feel guilty getting rid of the stuff that we have because we spent too much money for it or because it was a gift or because we're not using it, but we think we should be. And so we don't want to get rid of it, but then we feel guilty for having too much stuff. And it's like this trap that we can't get out of. That's really, really difficult. Can I tell you, I, we're in the process of starting a remodel on a couple of rooms in my house. So it's meant boxing everything oh, up. Yeah. I am reading your book last night and I'm going, <laughs> this is me. <laughs> It was scary, yes. actually, <laughs> but helpful because it really did cause me to ask some questions about what do I want my house to look like? And, yeah. and I want the same thing you talked about. I want people to come in and feel like they can relax and sit down and be at home. I don't want to be yelling at my children or grandchildren because they've marked something up that is just a piece of furniture. Right. At and the same time, I want my home to be welcoming. Exactly. And I think all of us deep down really want that. And yet we don't always, because we hear these messages saying, you need this and you need this and your home needs to look a certain way and you need to be a certain way, that we don't always think, what yeah. do I want? Mm -hmm. Who are the people that I share my home? What do they want? What do, and, and everyone has a different threshold for clutter and for what feels comfortable to yes. them. And so I like to encourage people to not base your standards of decluttering your home based on what you think is supposed to be clutter free, mm -hmm. but base it on what feels good and feels clutter free to you. You talk about decluttering your home, your mind and your soul. Mm -hmm. Talk about those last two places. Well, you know, I think in the same way that we filled up our homes with physical stuff, we fill up our lives and our schedules with with mental stuff and with activities and that yeah. kind of stuff. But we also fill up our souls kind of with this burden of feeling like we have to we have to fix ourselves and we have to save ourselves. And that's really what the book yeah. dives into. You know, at the heart of the matter, we can get rid of all the physical clutter in our lives, but what then? What are we going to fill our lives with? If we're still trying to be responsible yeah. for our own salvation, we're never going to we're never going to find that in yeah. an uncluttered house. Well, and there are choices that we can make that make life so satisfying, but actually getting to that place of quiet contemplation about this takes some getting rid of all the stuff that makes loud noises around you. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> there are so many different things competing for our time and for our attention and for our hearts and minds all the diff all mm -hmm. the time. And so really getting to the heart of the matter, but then we have to be honest with ourselves. What then am I trying to save myself. Yeah. And I think a lot of times, especially in, in Christian circles, we do that. We think if we do the right things and say the right things and say the right prayers and read the right Bible studies and go to church every Sunday, yeah. we'll, we'll do it. We'll attain this do, do, salvation. Do, do, do. Yes, yes, it's a very do it yourself. Yeah. It's a very mm -hmm. do-it-yourself culture in so many ways. Well, I loved your book. It was very challenging Thank and at you. the same time, very encouraging. Not just one that causes us to think about what needs to be decluttered and unstuffed from our lives, but you really give us some concrete ways of doing that. It's called Unstuffed, de Decluttering Your Home, Your Mind, and Your Soul. It's available wherever books are sold, and I think you'd really enjoy it. Ruth, thank you so much. Thank you so much for Thank you for your me. message. Good to have you with us. Thank